A warm welcome back to Mars the Mission for episode 6 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Mars colony, things are ticking over. Tickety boo. Um, I'm just clearing out where we've been bringing stone from the various different locations. We found it, the rocks we've been picking up. We're kind of doing a clean up operation as we go, really, as we're doing all the required things for the colony anyway. Um, so I think the next phase is going to be a sort of a, a clean up operation. While our crops are growing, our first lot of crops are growing, until we've got crops, we can't feed any animals, so we can't get any animals yet. Um, the bees, obviously, they've been set off and are underway, um, but yeah, we can't really move on to the next phase until crops have grown. So I thought, you know what we'll do? We'll do a bit of cleanup. And that brings me on to something. Um, we've been contacted by a company who've heard about our mission, what we're doing, and they have their own mission. And it's fascinating stuff. So there'll be a bit of a, well, we'll have a chat about it. So I'm thinking about, um, we're going to put in some more, well, we're going to put in some more stuff with assistance from them, which I'm going to talk about in a little while. But anyway, the, the byproduct that I'm not selling, everything that goes through this, the um, Universal Crusher, is selling. And that's helping us build up a bit of profit, sends money back, which enables them to send shuttles and stuff up to us for, with, with gear, you know. You know how it works. But lime we're keeping because we can use lime on our fields. But it produces a lot of it. So what I'm having to do is every so often clear the decks of the lime and put it in. So our trailer here is full. We do have a bigger trailer. I think next time I'll probably use the bigger one. Um, but I'm going to take this over and put this into the silo. And um, we're going to do a bit of cleanup. But what I'm going to do is probably skip ahead to November 2, I suppose. I'm just thinking, just for grass growing and the bees and that kind of stuff. I want to see how they're getting. I'm curious to see just how much the bees produce um, obviously the ones where we've got wild bees so we've got half our um, beehives are wild bees if you didn't watch the previous episode and half are standard beehives the wild bees it says each bee produce, produces 50 litres of honey and I think each pallet was a thousand wasn't it Whoa. This, uh, this, is, this is going um, it, I know I've said that about three or four times now but I'm not you know, I think we're going to on the next delivery um, we're going to get something else sent, I think. Might get another one of the uh, the Mars editions of the Masseys, I think that might work. But yeah, it's nice, like I say, seeing all the grass growing. I'm going to say it again, I, I, don't, I don't want people to get bent out of shape over this. This is just fun, we're doing a bit of farming and a bit of everything. You know, the game includes all sorts of cool stuff now. It's one of those things that for a long time on console, people said, oh, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? Why can't we do all the mining stuff? Why can't we have all the cool products? Why can't we do gold mining? And then when it all comes, people are then saying, oh, this is ridiculous. Why have we got all this? It's, I, don't, I don't know. So I, I'm just of that opinion. It's here. Let's use it. Let's, you know, I'm just having fun. I don't really mind this. There we go. It's very cool, so I'm just going to play around with some stuff. Why not? Um, so there's another couple of bits we're going to be looking at. So that um, Universal Crusher, um, we've got stuff running through that at the moment. That's given us a lot of different ores, and the ores are just going straight back to Earth for them to process and do whatever. Now, I have been asked or told, obviously, there is the processing plant that we could have built for that, but there's also something else, and we are really fully utilising the resources up here. Um, and I think that's something I... I I mean, I was aware of. I'm aware of companies like SpaceX and, you know, but I really didn't realise, when I spoke about it the other day, what a massive, I mean, massive industry space resource and exploration is in the private sector. I had no idea. I was looking online and it was um, extraterrestrial mining and that kind of stuff it's being referred to. And it is colossal. I mean, absolutely insane. Um, the money that's being invested, the, the future of it, um, and whilst being insane, it's that thing of, and I said the other day when I was talking about um, various different technologies that I've been exposed to, it's that old fart thing, you know, um, the future is here, the future is now, that kind of thing. Um, it really, really is. Stuff that was science fiction when I was growing up, is it's not science fiction anymore. And while some of the bits may be, you know, a little way ahead of us, um, some of it is here and it's happening. 
you know, the satellite technology, the robotics technology, the stuff that's available. I was looking at one company and what they're looking at for asteroid mining is um, not using machinery like rigs and drilling and that kind of stuff because that sort of equipment is heavy and you know they're looking at applying solvents um, so you're basically dissolving things solvents that will dissolve certain parts but not others and leave the bits you want intact I mean it's fascinating it's incredible you know what's happening is staggeringly clever um, there's a lot of very 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 smart people dealing with these sorts of things um, proper rocket scientists you know robotics engineers all these people microbiologists and it's it is staggering um but i also think terrifying at the same time um it's that thing of we haven't learned as a species and i know i'm going to get all preachy here and it's but it's true we haven't learned um we've got finite resources on our planet and this um, this is from one of the websites i was reading this is not me being i mean i'm, I'm sort of quoting it or paraphrasing should i say um and we have a, and we have a finite resources but we have an infinite um thirst for them so our requirement is infinite but uh, the resources are finite so that looking out to space for those resources is the next it's, I mean, obvious step, but it, apparently it's the next obvious step. But what's more terrifying is that sort of capitalism, that private sector, well, not private sector, everyone, you know, government's private sector, the fact that everything, whether it's disasters, whether it's climate change, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever it might be, and what's the, the new series of um, the game, Fallout, they bought the, se the series out of it. It was brilliant, absolutely loved it, fantastic. But it was that thing of monetizing everything, making money from everything. When humanity's on the brink, when we're we're at risk of total annihilation, there's money to be made from that. It's like, really? And this is the same thing. But it's also like you find, I suppose, wherever you go in the world, the UK is particularly bad for it, I, I think. I found being a hiker and a walker and I like camping and going out and, you know, always have done and had done as, as a kid that everything is owned in the UK everything is owned by someone there's there's a bit of common land here and there but and there's some national parks but even the national parks are kind of controlled and, and whatever there are a lot of places around the world where it's more free and open and you can pull up and camp and do what you want anywhere you know within reason it's very stifled and very owned here in the UK but what I was going to say was what I'm finding fascinating is this extraterrestrial resources extraterrestrial mining um the fact that people are, are deciding they're going to own space it's you know <laughs> space that's been around for billions of years stars that have been around for billions of years space that you know until recently the exploration of has been fairly limited when you consider the scale of it all um i'm going to ask a question in a little while because it's something that myself and mr cdp disagree on massively um and what I'm finding fascinating is that that's being monetized. Is, is that a thing of people will stake claims to, you know, this is our planet now, this is our asteroid, this is our... It's like, what? Really? Have we learned nothing? If we need the resources on a failing planet, then sort the resources. Make it a global concern. Make it a, have a global slush fund that everybody puts into. But, oh, I mean, it's just... And the thing is, because those resources will be extraterrestrial, you can guarantee the price of those resources will be ludicrous, he says, doing exactly the same thing. But I'm just, I'm just curious about it. Anyway, so while I finish this bit off, and we are going to get on to some clean-up and stuff, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll hit pay dirt. We just need it. We, we, need to, um, we need to run the colony. Like I said, it's not about the money on here. It's, we need the money because that's... The, that's the way that it, it works. That's the way it all works on here. You know, of course, I need to buy stuff. Um, so yeah, the question is this, right? I personally believe that space is infinite. That it goes on and on and on, you know, solar systems, galaxies, universes, whether it's one universe with, you know, infinite galaxies or, and it just it will go on forever. 
There's nothing to suggest there's an edge, there's an end to it. Mrs. Silly P believes it's finite, that there, there has to be an edge, there has to be a, a limit to it, there has to be. I, what do you think? What, space, infinite? Or does it have boundaries? You know, we haven't found those boundaries and we probably won't in our lifetimes. You know, the, the distance is travelled unless you can go faster than light speed and those kind of things. It, we are constrained and at some point, maybe in the future, people will be able to explore, you know, that sort of Star Trek warp speed type, you know, thing, potentially, I don't know. Um, I, which brings me on to, it's quite interesting because the things I've been watching, the new series of Discovery started as well, and I've been watching that because I love that, I, I, all the Star Trek stuff. Strange New Worlds, love that series. Picard, brilliant. Um, I've been loving all of it. So, um, what do you think? Space, infinite or finite? So anyway, I will see you probably into November 2 and we're going to start the cleanup process. We have got a few rocks here and there. I think most of the ones off the fields I've cleared, these ones you can't pick up. Um, there is a bit of rock when I was planting trees. Where was it? It was up along that ledge up there somewhere. We have got a bit of rock that runs around the side of our field around the back there. Um, but this is the sort of, this is the crater, the meteorite crater. We've got a few stones, rocks, boulders here. We've got a lot of stone that needs collecting and picking up, mixed in with some ore as well. So this is all going to need to be, I must say need to be, we are going to clear this up. And again, this is just while everything's growing. I wanted to try out a couple of things that have come out recently. So I thought, you know what, it's the perfect opportunity. I know it kind of links in. I was trying to keep the two evergreen and this separate. Um... And I know it's kind of it's farming and mining because both maps. I mean, this I'd already set this up to run this sort of stuff, and then I decided to jump on Evergreen Valley, which has then got the marble and it's got the coal mining and that kind of stuff. We're not doing coal mining and marble on here, but we are doing some other things as well. So I know they kind of do blend in a little bit. Um, but again, I just wanted to play. I just wanted to try some stuff out. We have got our challenges we've got to do on here and we're going to be aiming towards those. And again, I apologise for the delay in videos. It's just been a weird few weeks. I know I say that a lot and it just seems to be the way things are at the moment. It's just um, a very peculiar time. So, see you November 2. It's November 2, it's 10.19. We have to wait for the artificial rain system to stop working. <laughs> the Kemp rain system. Uh, so what I'm doing now then, we can clean up some of this crater anyway. Rocks, stone, um, but we've got some facilities to put in. Part of what I was talking about earlier, when I was saying about the um, resources, at, and, it, and it is literally listed as access in space resources. It's, it's crazy. Um, and it will allow centuries of economic growth, apparently. Emerging markets, apparently. <laughs> Apparently, uh, what I'm going to do actually is um, whiz over and check on the bees. Um, we'll use this because it's a little bit quicker than the nine miles now the other one runs at. We have also been sent, and it should be arriving at some point today, from one of the other colonies on Mars, because ours isn't the only one. Um, a vehicle that a few people said would be more appropriate for what we were doing. It's very much like the Warthog from Halo. It's, it's that we used it. We had a trial version of it on Alma, and I didn't, I didn't really do anything with it. Um, oh, the shuttle's arriving now, um, but it should be coming in through the main airlock. Um, so one of our buggies will be going, and that will be arriving. So that's pretty cool. Oh, okay, we've got a lot. Uh, I probably need to switch all these over now. I was just curious to see how we were looking. Uh, let's click on here. How we look? Oh, yeah, we've barely used anything. So that thousand, the thousand bees, um, we're going to get a fair bit out of this, aren't we? So we've got, according to this, 2,300 in storage. So two out the front. Are these liftable by hand? So they're not. Um, so all these front ones are the ones using wild bees. The ones at the back, standard bees. <laughs> standard bees. <laughs> Tamed bees. That's not liftable either. Uh, so what I need to do then is switch all of those over to selling directly. I was just curious. So we're going to have to get over here and get these shifted. Um, is it just me? Or since the CSZ pack got an update, the um, big bag handler seems a bit nerfed. Um, it doesn't seem to be working and lifting things quite how it did before. 
I mean, I might be imagining that, but that's that's the feeling I'm getting. Anyway. Uh, so at least we know it's working. We're getting them, them coming out of here. So what I will do, I will switch that over. Actually, I probably should do it now. Let's go into here. What we need to do then is switch that to selling. Yep. Yeah, selling. Yep. So it would only be the ones from the main one that we're going to have to um, move the pallets for. Other than that, it will all go like this. So the honey will be going back to earth. I mean, we might, we're going to keep any of it. I think what we could do, if we want any honey, we've got the end one, which is from the normal ones. And like I say, once these run out of wild bees, we'll see how much honey we get from them. At the end of the day, what we had to do was put in 20 beehives, and we've done that. We've done 10 with wild bees, 10 with normal. That's done. Tick. Beehive sorted. Um, I'm more than happy with that. And then also, I'll get these loaded up. We'll get those shipped at some point soon, but at least I know it's working. So anyway, back to what I was talking about. So... We have been contacted by a company. This company is real. We haven't been contacted by them. We, we have been contacted by this company. Um, the company's called AMC, and it's Asteroid Mining Company. I'm not making this up. You can go and look online, and there are tons of companies like this. It, it is absolutely bonkers. Um, this company was set up in 2016 by a guy called Mitch Hunter Scullion. It's a British company. English company working in collaboration with um, um, some robotic a robotics company in Japan, um, all very different stuff. It is, like I said, it is fascinating, um, and they are redefining the frontiers of mining. Apparently, but what is very cool is they've got a robot. They're looking at a satellite called Al um, Alchemist One, um, and it's all about near Earth asteroids (NEAs) um, and that potential. But what they're also doing is they are testing certain items and bits of equipment and stuff on earth so they've contacted us to say look you know in light of what you're doing there and the fact you are sort of doing some mining you are extracting resources and minerals from um, the surface we would like to help uh, invest and also it gives them a chance to test out equipment so i thought you know what Why is that not picking that up i think it's because of the, those stones there potentially um so i thought you know at the end of the day as, as of what I was saying earlier <laughs> that's the world we live in now crazily that is the world we live in so we're going to be doing a mixture of rock and well the, the big stones and the rock from here um, and we've got some facilities that are going to be going in anyway all that so I'm talking about that so AMC asteroid mining company and they are part of the national uh, the, the British UK space agency um, part of recognises them. Um, let's tip that up. Tip that up. Get that going a bit quicker. So, and what's cool is, and there's a section on our robots, and they are pioneering this thing, and it's called the Scar E, not to be confused with the other Scar. Um, this is Space Capable Asteroid Robotic Explorer. Now they are using this. This is this has terrestrial applications as well as extraterrestrial explorations. Next generation in surface mobility. This thing is staggering. Um, with the Tohoku University Space Robotics Lab in Japan, um, this thing grips the surface when it walks. It's symmetrical, six-legged. It has um, lightweight aluminium and carb carbon fibre chassis. It's designed for payload delivery and inspection. What is, and when I was saying earlier on about things being terrifying, what is terrifying? I've said this before. Oh, it's either number five is alive or uh, AI becomes self aware. Um, it has swarm capability. Now, swarm capability is drone thing, and the British Army military are using swarm capability with their drone fleets and stuff at the moment. And it's staggeringly clever and pretty amazing what is capable, what they're capable of doing. Um, and what it's designed to do is they, these things can be programmed in advance, and they can be set, and they become practically autonomous. 
Um, so in areas where there is little or no GPS signal, um, where there's no way for an operator to get to them, these things can be programmed. They can work in swarms, in groups, for a continued goal or mission purpose. They're like spiders, and, and that, honestly, they're, they're fantastic. 360 degree field of vision, radiation hardened electronics, um, but what they're saying is for terrestrial applications for repair, safety, um, exploration, for you know, things like mining collapses or volcanoes and things like that, these things can go anywhere. I mean, absolutely incredible. So, um, yeah, so I thought, you know what? Because I'm, like I said, talking about Fallout and Discovery and I've got a bit of my sci-fi thing going on. And it's not sci-fi and it's not macked up. This is real. I remember watching stuff about the Royal Marines when they were doing their drone stuff, their drone swarms. Um, and they were flying off one of the assault ships for payload delivery. They were delivering ammunition and they were delivering Bergens and rations and stuff with drones. These things were taken off in like fives and sixes. And you had one that was doing aerial reconnaissance, um, one or two, and then you had two or three that were doing payload delivery. You had, oh, it was, it was incredible to see, and like I say, and terrifying at the same time, which is just nuts. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the, the electric telehandler in a minute, we'll grab a couple more stones, get this filled up. And what we're going to do just over there, you know we've got the little mine entrance over there, we're going to add in a couple of new buildings. Um, which, whilst we are paying for, we are being, you know, like I say, this is a chance for um, AMC to test out some gear. So, I don't think we're going to get the robot here, but it's all about their mining processes as well. How do you refine this stuff? How do you deal with the, the stuff you're actually gathering? You know, it's all well and good having something that can um, deliver payloads that can do um, inspections of sites and if you can get samples and stuff like that but then what do you do with those samples and that's what I was saying earlier on about those technologies where companies are using solvents and things like that it's a brave new world I'm not sure I, I don't know whether every generation feels like this whether you reach a certain age and you start to feel like this and that, this, this, this is one of those you're here at a pivotal moment in Mr. Silly P's life, I don't know where I fit in with it all. You know, I always feel kind of, I don't know, sad. I, I really, I, I don't know where I fit. I'm, I'm that generation up a little bit, I guess, being in my fifties, and this technology, I find it fascinating, and I, and I love it. And I've, I've got, you know, I've got a couple of drones myself, and I love flying my drones and. You know, every time I've been on holiday recently and I thought we'll get some drone footage the weather's been appalling and I haven't been able to use them um, and I love I, I love where it's going and, I, and I've, like I say I've loved science fiction stuff since I was a kid but um, I don't know where I fit in to all of it and I don't suppose I do I suppose I will, I'm going to reach a point not far off now where now that sounds weird, not like I'm a robot or anything, but I become obsolete, you know? Where your ability to um, keep up with current technology, you become that, you know, oh, old people in technology. I worry about that. I, I worry that that becomes a thing. I always said when I worked at the school, you reach a point where you, you're at capacity. Every new thing you learn, when you're young, you're fine. You seem to learn everything and everything stays, and you remember everything, and every song lyric, and all this stuff. Then you reach a point where every new thing that goes in, something falls out, <laughs> something disappears, and you forget stuff, and you know, and it's it's that. I don't know when you reach that point where the, your capacity, um, your limit is reached, and your ability to take on board new technology, and understand it all, and how it works. I suppose it depends how how you keep on top of it. If you don't do anything for a long period of time and then all of a sudden you try and jump into new technology, I guess there's a big gap and to try and bridge that gap between your knowledge and what the new knowledge is. But if you're keeping up with current trends and how things are moving all the time, I suppose the jump isn't so big. But yeah, I don't know. It was, as I'm talking, that realization just hit me. I don't know. Yeah, very strange. Anyway, 
so once this is full so what we're hoping to do because this is going to be a finite resource that we've got on the floor here and this is what we're talking about is that trying to find infinite resources to help a planet with finite resources i want to say infinite it's um everywhere has a finite resource but it comes down to what i was saying earlier if space is truly infinite but then how far can you travel? How far do you travel? And then it becomes that thing again, we're back to this, the moral thing of it is, should you, should we? I suppose it comes down to people say, yeah, but if a planet's uninhabited, if there's no one there, who are you harming? What does it matter? If it helps us stay alive, if it helps us as a race, why wouldn't you? And I guess there's an argument to that, yeah, absolutely. Um, but what lengths do you go to, to achieve that, you know? I don't know. Whoa, this is deep, man. Who thought they would come on and watch a farming simulator video, one, on a Mars colony, <laughs> and then talk about all this stuff? This is going to take quite a long time to get this clear. There's ore and stuff all over the place. I mean, we're not going to have any shortage for a while. Okay, I'm going to see in a minute once this is full. But yeah, the point about it is what we're going to be putting in, because this, technically, what we've got around us is going to be fairly finite. Um, we're going to put in a... Um, um, I suppose like a quarry, like a drilling sort of situation. Um, yeah, we're looking on this. I'm nearly 94%. If we get one more bucket, though, we'll be good. At 10.48, we've got a full load on there. I've got a little bit left in the bucket here, and our facilities are in. They have been built. So I'm going to put this little bit of stone over here. I'm going to split between the two. So we've got our um, universal crusher here. Now, both of these facilities are going to require water. Um, but what we've also got is the so we've got a stone quarry. So where the um, mine sort of comes out of the wall, the wall, I suppose it is a wall, is now a rock wall. We've now got this facility. See our money's gone down, but that's fine. That's not a problem. So this is the quarrying facility. It's going to take stuff. I mean, that looks like lime, but anyway, if you come out of the hillside. This is going to process it, and this will give us stone coming out. So any stone moving forward we can get and when you look at the expanse of i mean yeah there's going to be no shortage and whatever what's around as well i mean this is kind of a just covers all the bases really keeps everything chugging along um so i mean we can fill this up this can run on its own however you want to go about it and i think we can set this to distributing as well so this can then automatically process and send to our but it'll probably send to the other one as well so we can keep those chugging away the whole time i suppose what i do need is a water distribution system that would work well as well wouldn't it because that means these could then run indefinitely without requiring much maintenance or assistance and then this here is a wash plant so this will um, give us pay dirt now we haven't got anything for the pay dirt yet that's going to be the next process along um, so what i'm hoping is if we can get some more stone into our um, crusher over there run that through plus we get our crude oil running which is still producing the kerosene and paraffin and all that kind of stuff um our money is going up gradually i've got the honey that's going to be selling as well and our greenhouse is still chugging away um so what we'll do is when we do the next step on from here will be the next process on and that will be extracting whatever we need to extract out of the pay dirt um, whereas that one over there is doing it already automatically this one requires a couple of extra processes to do it and this is what i was talking about i wanted to give these a go I wanted to try them out and um sort of in anger so to speak so what i've got to do now is yeah, drop some off in here we'll have to get some water i'm just trying to think actually we do have the um, there's the base game one but that's not a continual is it Build mode. Um, what am I thinking of? Containers or tools? Um, what is that under greenhouses? Might be tools. 
Oh, hang on. What about... Might be silo extensions. There you go. Supplementary water tank. Helps you supply your greenhouse. Oh, okay. It might only work with greenhouses. Don't know if it's worth a try, though. Um, oh, there is that one. I wonder if we can get one installed. Um, was it Omatana? Who was it? And you can put stuff into it and it'll distribute out. I don't know if it's worth trying one of those. 2,100 is not too expensive. It's only 5,000 litres. I suppose we want something that's more kind of ongoing, really. A distribution hub. What's that one? Stone buying station? No. Okay, I'll give that some thought. I mean, I've got my tanker. I can just I can just tank water and fill it up. That's not a problem. Um, so let's go over and grab the uh, the trailer. What I'll do is this first load I'll put into our new facility and we'll get that running. I'll get some water in there and we'll get some pay dirt being produced. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what this first process is about. And um, the whole time that's working, the little uh, stone quarries chugging away. The next load I'll put into our crusher over there and we'll keep these processes bimbling along. Every what was that? What was that? That's weird, there's something invisible there. But like I said, our crops are all growing. I mean to get a bit of speed up here. Just to get over this quite a big bump there. I suppose I could have just backed in, couldn't I? There we go. Let's push that in. So this is our pay dirt. That's going in. So yeah, pay dirt and water, pay dirt and water, stones and water, pay dirt out. It looks like it's going to take quite a lot as well, so we can keep that chugging away. And then the next step on will be what comes after producing the pay dirt. And this is all part of the extraction process. So we're going to get another full load, get that put in there, uh, get the water tank. I, I might try, I don't know if not to try one of those off camera or not, but... Maybe. Maybe. Next rock. Remember to the. We've got to remember as well the gravity here on Mars is only a third of what it is on Earth. So rocks like this with a lot of mass, only a third. Whoa! He says. Well, that sounded very much like the. Uh, so that R two D two in there. A few problems. <laughs> yeah, so we can lift much heavier things. That's the beauty of it. Probably shouldn't put the lights on. Train the battery. <laughs> Turn them off.
it's 11 53 we made we, we may we have made we're making good progress at clearing around the crater we've got most of the stone from all around this side we've got some of the big stones out some of the big stones left in the middle but they're surrounded by ore so it's a little bit trickier to get to until maybe we've got the stone so all we've got really is a little bit of stone left here it's a little bit there's a fair bit here um and some bigger stones out to the outside but other than that we've cleared most of it up um we have got we're almost full at the um crusher there and we've got just over 100,000 litres in our new pay dirt wash plant. So this one's going to go into the wash plant as well. I spent a bit of time bringing water up, or bringing the tank over and filling up with water. And what I'm going to do is put the last lot of that in and then we'll get the pay dirt running. So that'll be both facilities running, pay dirt will be being produced, and then our little quarry, I'm going to set that to um, distributing. So that will transfer over. Like I said, I might have a look around and see if we can find a water um, a water dispersal system. There are a few, like I say, knocking around. So what we'll do is put that 8,000 litres in. Beauty of having autonomous tractors. We can set them in swarm mode. I was thinking actually about what I was talking about earlier on. All the science fiction science fiction or business opportunity what is it <laughs> now it's a business opportunity it never used to be it was science fiction but i was thinking about you know we're, we're talking about you know mining asteroids and stuff like that but if you think about really in the last few years especially in the evolutions of the game as well the technology and the advancements um in farming simulator but in farming generally with the precision farming with spy application with the use of drones for I mean all sorts of stuff now for the various different I mean having gone to Lama and gone to you know various different events and things like that and you look at the equipment and the sensor arrays and stuff that are on equipment nowadays as well which allows for mechanical weeders as it's going along and it will it will read where the weeds are and turns the mechanical weeder on to pick up those weeds so it's not constantly running it's only picking them up if you go to a place like holland and where they're running hydroponic systems in japan they're doing hydroponics as well um they're doing farming like greenhouse farming hydroponic farming but multi-layered so when you've got a situation where you've got a plot of land and you haven't got a lot of room you haven't got a lot of land rather than just having a field with a crop in it it's like when you see the multi-tiered like you know the driving ranges for golf it's like that it'll be three or four stories tall of hydrop hydroponics so you're taking the same plot of land and you're multiplying your crop three four five fold because you're going up rather than spreading out so when you think about you know all these technologies and things we're talking about it is um it is staggering really when you think about where we're at and where it's going and the advances that are being made for this very reason because we don't have a lot of room we've got growing um societies populations and they need to be fed you know and it's looking at all these clever ways that that's being done um so this facility here doesn't actually have a production point thing to it that one is running lime and ore production so I say I've got 107,000 litres in there and the water was full. That's now chugging away and all of that is set to selling. So that's all good. Um, I could take the gold ore and copper ore and we could smelt it and that kind of thing. But for the time being, we're good. If we go down to the bottom on here, our quarry is running and we are distributing. So on the hour, that will distribute out to the various different locations. And then pay dirt. We've got 156,341 litres of stones. Water's at 66, so it's not completely full. And we're going to turn that on as well. So that will now be producing our pay dirt from the stone. It'll be running through its production, its cycles. And then what we'll do is probably the next episode, we'll deal with the pay dirt. I need to, like I say, need to sort out the um, honey. Get the, the honey is now set to selling, but the stuff that's all out will need to be put onto a trailer and taken oh before we finish what i'll do i'm going to head on up to the um the hangar bay the hatch way out to the outdoors and see if our vehicle's there and what i'll probably do is bring that down and i'll sell our previous version um and then 
we've got a little bit more to clear up here but now the quarry's running that's fine and then like so we've got some, a bit around the edge that we can go i don't know if you can just see the gray over there in the distance there's a bit of stone around the edge there and there's a bit up the top so as far as what what is out on the map already that is finite but now we've got the quarry running we're good and then i haven't decided what we're going to do at the um, iron ore yet we've got a load of iron ore or all, whatever you call it, but that's all here. There's some here, and we've got some over here, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that. There's a load over there on that hillside, um, but that may be for another day. So I'm just going to take this load, dump that in. I'll tie up these last little bits. Whether I'll do that now or later on, I don't know. But since that's what we were doing in this episode, and then we'll be into... December. It's going to be interesting to see if we get snow. Hmm. Whether the camp weather system is going to, um, yeah, will it provide us with snow? That would be a curiosity, wouldn't it? <laughs> snow on Mars. Who'd have thought? Right, we're coming up to the main airlock. Uh, I've, I've started collecting up some of the honey, sort of batching it up into sections so I can load it onto a trailer. We'll grab the trailer out later on, which is absolutely marvellous. And then what we're going to do now is head up, and we should have in the airlock, our Spartan program, <laughs> Warthog, should be here. We have got some gaps here. When I put the trees in, we have got gaps that we can still drive through once the trees do start growing. Although I do seem to have some weird some weird spacings here and there. Um, when we get into December, the next batch of trees we can then put in. So like I say, each full month I'll be putting in another, was it 948? Um, and we'll keep chugging away until we get close to that 10,000. I'm going to keep on my list and here it is. So this was suggested by a lot of people with the tubular design and that kind of thing. It has got a little bit of a feel of the, uh, the water hog, I suppose. How much are we going to use it? I don't know. Is the back door open? Is it, uh... Maybe not. No tension straps in the back either. Huh. Didn't realise that. Anyway. Yeah, we've got plenty of space to get through here. It's kind of silvery white, isn't it? We've got a winch on the front, which is going to come in pretty handy. So this came from another colony. I can't. I don't know which colony it came from. We just got a message saying it's going to be here. It'll be in the airlock, and and there it is. But what it does mean, so we get down. It's pretty good on the suspension. It does mean actually if we've got to do any travelling around on the map any further, I mean, this goes up to 124 miles now. Well, that's absolutely bonkers. It does mean that our other one we can. Um, the little buggy. I just thought the little buggy was more kind of Mars, not Mars Rover, but Lunar sort of Lunar Lander sort of thing. I mean, suppose we could keep them both, but... Whoa! Blimey, that turned on a dime. I was not expected to turn that quickly. It is very cool. Oh, hang on. Mirrors. I need that to be about there. That one. Oh no, that's still in that mirror. Whoa! Wow, that's... Um... I think I'd remember this when we did the uh because that one's gonna get bring that one to about there. So right. So this one's going. It's cool though. Uh do we just repaint it? What's it selling for? 7487. Let's repaint it. 760. Yeah, that's all right. It's gone. And with that, we have come to the end of this episode. So, mineral extraction is continuing. 
as we move forward and like I say once the crops start to grow when we've got feed for our animals we can start getting the animals in there's no point getting animals yet once the grass is fully grown we can then make a start on silage work hay work just general grass so we can get sheep in so we can feed the sheep and um, once we get some wheat barley some of the crops that are growing and we can get some straw then we've got bedding and um, we can look at the various different animal types as we go uh, our sugar cane should start growing soon as well we've got more trees to go in and we will gradually start working for our process um, so that is where we are at i hope you've enjoyed it i know it's a little bit different if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching